Now let's shift our focus away from our formal system and back to natural language for a minute. The way that conditionals work in a language like English is actually quite controversial, but at least we can separate out what a conditional literally says from what it implies or what we feel like we're warranted to infer from it in the context of a conversation. Here's a really basic example that doesn't involve a conditional of this conversational implicature. Suppose you phone me to ask about someone you're thinking of hiring whose former boss I am, and you say to me, is Alex a good employee? And I say, well, Alex uh, always keeps sharp pencils. It sounds like what I'm actually saying to you is that uh, Alex is not a good employee. And that's what this statement conversationally implies. But that's not what I'm literally saying. So we need to be able to separate out what a sentence literally says from what it implies in the context of a conversation. And especially in the case of conditionals, this can get quite complicated. Fortunately, we have a handy concept of conversational implicature which helps us to winnow out what's conversationally implied from what's literally said by a claim, conditional or otherwise, in natural language. And this video is going to just take a look at how that works and how we can apply it. Consider the following sentence. I'll go to the picnic unless it rains. Well, we can symbolize this as follows. We would say, unless it rains becomes if not Q, and I'll go to the picnic becomes P, and the unless, because it's if not, makes not Q into our antecedent. So the whole thing comes out as if not Q, then P. In the last video, we did unless the other way, but we also saw that Q unless P is equivalent with Q or P, and so the order doesn't much matter, whichever way seems clearer to you in terms of thinking about it. Now, we've seen that the conditional here will come out true when we go from F to T, from T to T, or from F to F, but false if we go from T to F. So what I'm saying in this instance is only going to come out false supposing that it doesn't rain and I don't go to the picnic, this bottom line here. Now, you might be a bit worried about this line right here. Suppose I say to you, if it doesn't rain, then I'll go. And it doesn't rain comes out false. It does rain. And I show up at the picnic anyway. You might say, well, hold on a minute. That's not what you said. And so there's a real temptation to read this sentence up here as not Q, if and only if P. How do we decide which of these to pick? This is where the notion of conversational implicature comes in, which has received a lot of attention in the secondary literature. It's the subject of much discussion. And the question of whether or not this literally says not Q, if and only if P, or if not Q, then P, turns on the notion of cancelability. If it's literally part of the truth conditions of the sentence, then I can go on to say something further that will just cancel it out. So I can say, I'll go to the picnic unless it rains, and I can add, and even if it does, I'll still go. This is not a contradiction, because you can add something further without cancelling it. And so if you can add a further sentence without cancelling it that says something to this effect, which corresponds to this row of the truth table, then it's not part of the truth conditions of the actual sentence, although it's conversationally implied. I'm going to give a bit of a simpler example just before I wrap up, so you can see how this works. Take our old friend and or. Now, just to give a truncated truth table here, we've seen that P or Q is true when both of them are true, although we usually, in English, we mean one or the other, but not both. So suppose that P is, we can go hiking, and Q is, we can ride the gondola. And I say, we can go hiking or we can ride the gondola. Well, it would contradict this sentence to say, but we can't do either. Well, that contradicts P or Q, which is just equivalent with not, not P and not Q, by double negation into Morgan's, as we saw in an earlier video. So if I say we can go hiking or we can ride the gondola, but actually we can't go hiking and we can't ride the gondola, then clearly I've contradicted it. But it is consistent with we can go hiking or we can ride the gondola to add, in fact, we can do both which is equivalent with we can go hiking and we can ride the gondola. The denial of this sentence down here is not part of the truth conditions of P or Q, but the denial of this sentence within the parentheses here is part of its truth conditions. And the way that we tell these apart is that this sentence cancels the initial one and P and Q does not cancel what we originally said. So if you want to know whether something is part of the truth conditions of a sentence or whether it's just part of its conversational implicature, see whether the denial of the thing you're wondering about entails a canceling of the original sentence. So if you take the thing that a sentence putatively implies and you negate it and that cancels it, then it's part of what it logically implies. But if the negation of it does not cancel the original, then it's merely part of its conversational implicature. Just to run through our example again, we can go hiking or we can ride the gondola. You might say this implies that we can't go both hiking and riding the gondola. But in fact, the P or Q does not entail not P and Q, but it does entail not parenthetical, not P and not Q. And this is how we can distinguish what a sentence logically implies from what it merely conversationally implies.